And the whole sex thing, I didn't even want to have sex with him. I did it for this bizarre reason because I felt extremely adult in my mind at age 15. And I felt like that if I didn't have sex, I was never, I was not a true adult. And I wanted to get, I wanted to put childhood behind me and be an adult. And so it was just, that was really the only reason. <laughs> um, right. Okay. I, I don't. And, and you understand that growing up without a father, that is the natural pattern, right? You, you generally epigenetically tend towards being our selected uh, early promiscuity, lack of boundaries, and a desire to latch onto a man or a boy, I guess, in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the effect well, of growing up without a father in general. I've read about that, but I don't understand the reasons why. And that's what I'm hoping to get to in this conversation and hopefully help other girls without fathers because I don't want that this to happen to another woman. Right. I well, just don't, I just the, don't the understand why, the psychological reasons. I don't get it. Well, it's not just psychological. It's, it's, um, it's epigenetic, which means it's biological. Oh. Like in general, girls who grow up without fathers, they get their periods a year earlier. Okay. Than girls who grow up with fathers. I didn't. When you grow up without a father, your body starts programming you for a dangerous, violent, gynocentric world. Because your body says, no dad around. That must mean there's war. Or there's no investment in children from the fathers, mm -hmm. right? And so what that means is, let's say that, and, and for white people, it's generally war. So your body is like, okay, so there's war going on. There's famine. There's, there's disease. There's something that's taking out people randomly. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do in order to reproduce in a dangerous or unstable or uncertain environment, you try and have kids as soon as possible. Wow, I didn't know that. I yeah, yeah it's, it's quantity over quality. And when animals are in danger, uh, they generally tell, like prey species, like rabbits, they have tons of kids because they can't tell when the next hawk or fox or wolf is going to come along and just eat them up. So they strive to have um, sex as early as possible, as often as possible. They have as many kids as possible, and they almost they always invest almost nothing into those kids because it's just, yeah, you know, just like it's the tadpole or, or, or the oyster you know, versus the polar bear or the wolf or the, the, the predator species have far fewer children and they have to teach them how to hunt. They have to teach them, right? They have to really invest. Right. And so if you grow up without a father, you grow up with the characteristics of a prey species, which is early compulsive sexuality, early menstruation, um, boy craziness. <laughs> yeah. And um, it is a, a wild, uh, I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some of the uh, facts and, you know, we'll, Put our sources. So, fathers, <clears throat> we emit pheromones, which is not just Latin for Indian food fueled farts, but these are <laughs> airborne chemical signals, right? And they, airborne chemical signals called pheromones, they trigger physiological and behavioral behavior, like behaviors, right? Right. Uh, male pheromones have different effects on young females. Exposure to the pheromones of biological fathers appears to slow down puberty in girls. While exposure to the pheromones of unrelated adult males speeds up puberty. You understand? Yes. If your dad's around, puberty slows down, comes later. If men are around who aren't your father, your body is like, oh, okay, so we're not pair bonding, uh, either because the men don't care or there's a huge amount of danger. Men are in short supply, so we better have as many kids as possible because it's not a stable environment. If there's no dad around, it's not a stable environment, and your body responds um, now, you were appropriately. A recent Australian study found that having older brothers can also delay the onset of puberty in girls. The more older brothers a woman has, the older she is when she gets her first period. You, of course, were an only child. Right. Boys whose fathers are absent are more likely to reach puberty at a later age. That's the opposite of girls. Despite reaching puberty later, they are more likely to become fathers at an earlier age. So um, it's, it's biology and it's our genes struggling to to understand the environment and to adjust our reproductive strategy appropriate to the level of stability in our environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, and um, I'm glad I'm talking to you because I didn't know this. I never heard of this. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, of course. I mean, there's lots of reasons why we don't know this stuff. 
Uh, so after accounting for a set of parental involvement variables, adolescents living with two biological parents were significantly less likely to transition into sexual activity when compared to adolescents from all other family structures. Adolescents from other family structures, right, other than two biological parents, were between 40% and 198% more likely to enter into sexual activity than adolescents living with two biological parents. Well, now, um, we'll get to this crazy uh, boy in a sec. Okay. For, um, for adolescent females, each year spent in a single parent household from birth to 11 years old increased the likelihood they would engage in sexual intercourse during adolescence by approximately 8%, right? So you were pretty, you said from three to 11 years old. So that's eight years times eight, 64%. So you were 64% more likely to engage in sexual uh, intercourse during adolescence because you didn't have a biological father's pheromones. Father absence is an environmental toxin. Hmm. That doesn't mean you're poisoned, right? I'm just right, saying right. that it has an effect on your biology. Um, we've got uh, a presentation we'll link to below, The Truth About Single Moms. And uh, Paul Rayburn, uh, I did an interview with him. He's got a book called Do Fathers Matter? What Science is Telling Us About the Parent We've Overlooked, right? Mm -hmm. You know that old phrase, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Well, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, usual feminist claptrap and Marxist claptrap. Um, the reality is that you were biologically programmed for what happened. That doesn't mean that there's no choice, no free will. It's not an inevitability, mm -hmm. but certainly in the absence of this kind of knowledge, right. it's even more likely that this is going to go down, right? Right. And unfortunately, because this is the, excuse me, this right. is the, this is the screwed up thing about single moms and single dads too, if they do this too. If you are raising a child without a father, what you need to do is look up the effects of raising a child without a father mm -hmm. so that you can teach your children about the risk factors involved in being raised without a father. And the risk factors are enormous. Yeah. Criminality, promiscuity, getting involved with unstable people like this 15-year-old stalky lunatic fellow. Mm -hmm. um, drug addiction, alcoholism, cigarette smoking, wide variety of dysfunctional be behaviors, antisocial behavior, all of these associated with growing up without a dad. This information has been out for decades. Single moms are not doing the 10-minute Google search to say, huh, no parent, no, no daddy around. I wonder what effect that's going to have on the kids. I better find out. Oh, no. We're all just concerned about ALR and apples and BPA in bottles, but we don't ever look up what happens to children without fathers. Right. And I'm sorry that your mother didn't do that. I'm sorry that my mother didn't do that. But these seem to be the facts.